what were you listening to when you were 11? Uh, when I was 11, I listened to loads of um, uh, Led Zeppelin and uh, Jimi Hendrix. It was when I first started playing electric guitar. Yeah. Uh, and I just thought they were so amazing. So I, can, I kind of, um, I developed a kind of uh, tunnel vision music taste where I only listened to the, the rock gods. <laughs> I can't really remember in great detail. I don't know. I probably would have been in the camper van a lot with my mum and dad, and they would have been listening to miscellaneous Grateful Dead records as we got lost trying to find somewhere to camp. Yeah. All right. Can you tell me the history of squid in three sentences? Whoa. Um, sentence one we were all friends that was that was a short sentence you got a lot of catching up today no i'm not <laughs> not finishing the sentence i'm trying to keep it concise i'm not using commas yeah 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 um you do the next one so sentence one we were all friends sentence two um we used to put on a lot of gigs and play to our friends at each other's houses. Back over to you. And since it's three, it's got out of hand. It's got out of hand. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> good enough, Arlo? Yeah. Good. Would you rather have tentacles of fingers or shoot ink out of your bum every time you're happy? <laughs> Say that again. Would you, would you rather have tentacles of fingers or shoot ink out of your bottom every time you're happy? Um, the second one sounds a lot more fun, I think. And plus, if I had tentacles for fingers, I don't, if either of us had tentacles for fingers, we wouldn't be very good at playing guitar. Or maybe we would. Maybe we'd be a bit better at playing guitar because we'd a little bit more flexible. We can get those jazz chords in. Like that. You'd have a longer reach, yeah. There, there's ways you can just like conceal them both. You can just wear gloves or you can just always wear black trousers. Black trousers or a nappy, yeah. Black trousers is a good idea, yeah. Um, it might get a bit soggy though. Yeah. Catch, isn't it? At least you'd be happy. Yeah. I yeah. think you'd learn to stop being happy, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> right. What's your favourite song in the new album? Mine is Paddling. Oh, thanks very much. Glad you like it. Uh, it's hard for us to pick favourites because they kind of change all the time. But I think I'm really excited for people to hear the song Global Groove. I don't know if you listen to the album, but yeah. um, it's that's quite different from the other tracks and other things we've put out before. So. I think we're always quite excited about that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. I think my favourite track on the album is kind of a bit cheating because it's two tracks, but the first one, Resolution Square, into the second one, GSK. I think that's my favourite because I like stuff that comes at the beginning of things. Yeah. During lockdown one, you stayed together in Chippenham to work next to our friend Cena's shop. What was that like? Oh, well, they had really nice sandwiches. So... Um, <laughs> That was a really good aspect of uh, of the whole process, um, yeah. and it was really fun for us all to be together because we were separated for such a long time, and we've never actually had that much time apart from each other. So um, we've learnt to depend on each other for our emotional <laughs> well being. So um, <laughs> we. We're really happy to be together and uh, summer was just starting so we could be outside and uh, we were well looked after in the nice town of Chippenham. So uh, yeah, it was a really nice time to look back on. Cena so, you know, was very nice. You'd come into the old road garden and tell us that it sounded good. Even <laughs> there are times it probably didn't sound that good because the songs weren't ready yet. All right, Cena wouldn't lie. <laughs> that is good to know then in that case. 
Yeah, you don't want to be calling her a liar on on on. No, no if it sounded rubbish, she'd definitely tell you. Yeah, that is true. Actually, I can I can imagine that. So in that case, yeah, the songs were sounding good at the time in which she noticed that. All right. You could sneak in to the studio and change one thing on the album without anyone else noticing. What would it be? That's a good question. We've never been asked that before. Um... If I if I could go back, there's a song near the end of the album called Peel Street, and um, there was one bit in it that at the time I thought shouldn't be in there, which was the saxophone part, and it was it was it was highly controversial whether it should be in there or not. And I listened to a version of it the other day with with it in, and I was like, what's that thing? It sounds awful, but it also sounds great. And lo and behold, it was the saxophone part that we took out. But then again, you know, the list could go on. There's, there's lots of things that you could go back and want to change. Yeah. I'm glad we're not allowed back. <laughs> yeah. It's good to, when you have a project, to have an end point so you can't go back because otherwise you end up working on it forever, which is I what we did with our first EP. Yeah. I think we're not very good at putting the, the stop mark in, are we? We always try and go back into it, try and make it more and more, you know, improved. And um, sometimes it's easier just to say, we finished now, which is what we did. You're, you're going to be in an issue with Black Country New Road, uh, Black Midi and Dan Carey. And I think you know someone quite well. Um, can you tell me a secret about any of them? And are you clones made by Dan Carey? Based on what um, some other bands have said that have worked with Dan Carey. You're going to need to explain that, darling. Okay, so one says I have to explain it. I spoke to a band called Tina. Yeah. Um, Dan Carey is a normal man with... Um, who, flew, who throws plectrums at you and has guitars for hands who, and clones you. Is any of that true? <laughs> There's Tinu. They're liars. <laughs> um, right. Uh, can I tell you a secret about any of those? Um, Dan Kerry's cat is twice the size of his dog. Biggest dog. His dog is about this big. Oh. I, maybe even four times big. That's little feta. And then he's got a giant cat called Cosmo who's about this big. Mm. Would you have liked your own music when you were 11? Uh, yeah. I think so. Might have found it a little bit um, confusing, but I think that's what makes music good if you listen to it and feel confused. Mm. Would you agree? Yeah. Nice. All right. Marmite, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Answer. In fact, yesterday I went to the shop to buy Marmite and they didn't have any because apparently there's a Marmite shortage at the moment because uh, the breweries aren't making enough beer. And one of the ingredients in beer, I think it's something to do with the yeast. But wow. Marmite used the, like, the leftovers of what they don't use in the breweries. So there's actually like a big Marmite shortage at the moment. Wow. That's what the woman in the shop told me. So don't quote me on it, but well, yeah. you can quote me on it, but. <laughs> we'll get it fact checked. <laughs> okay. Not sure if my granddad has Marmite. I hope he does. Yeah. <laughs> well, have you tried um, the new chili Marmite? I haven't I have tried that, yeah. I like it. Also, you say it's not spicy enough, but I think it's just right. I think there's a top tip if it's not quite spicy enough. Add a little bit of uh, Encona chilli sauce in there as well. Mm. Chef's kiss. Right, have you tried it, Anton? I haven't tried it. Um, Ollie made us try the Marmite hummus, uh, which I thought was disgusting, but he is adamant that it's really nice. But. Mm -hmm. It's two worlds colliding that I just don't think of. it's not quite right. It's not right. Like Marmite and peanut butter. I haven't tried that yet either. Yeah. Oh, that sounds horrible. But Marmite and cheese go together really well. That's true. Someone maybe had a weird thing. Well, no, 
And we yesterday we tried something really weird that sounds horrible, but it's actually so good. So we just put some plain wheat bix no milk, and just put some marmite on because someone <laughs> recommended it to that to us. It's actually so good. That sounds nice. It is. Wow. Just right. plain wheat bix with marmite on. It sounds horrible. Yeah. I talked to him about the wheat bix brand. But I, I think um, other people will like it because when we posted it, Ma might like it. So that was the month. Nice one. Okay, going up. Next time I got weed sticks in the house, I'll uh, I'll give it a try. All right. Who are your music villains? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my music villains are probably my neighbours because um, I've got an out of tune piano that I play all the time and. Uh, someone moved out, but I've heard a lot of stomping on the ceiling before, so I don't think they like that too much. <laughs> uh, Boris Johnson. <laughs> maybe Boris Johnson's my neighbour. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> they explain the banging. If aliens are taking over the world and you have 24 hours to live, what would you do? Um, I'd go to the shops and buy and spend all my money on like chocolate bars and then just watch and eat all of them and then like it was watching TV because mm. if, if if you're gonna gain on weight you may as well just it's not gonna be much of an issue if you're gonna be exploded or something later yeah it's true yeah there's a there's a Bristol uh, there's a tower down the road in Bristol which I always walk by and it's really tall. It looks like a big white kind of tubey kind of thing. And it's got a ladder going up it and it's the tallest thing around. And I reckon if you were to climb up that when there was a zombie apocalypse going on and take some snacks with you, you'd be able to get through a lot of snacks before they- and The chainsaw. Before, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what would you do with the aliens? This isn't a zombie. Oh, um, well, if it's aliens, you have to imagine you've got no chance. So you might as well just have a good time. I mean, if, they, if they're coming to completely destroy the planet, I'd go somewhere with a good view because if you just accept, if you got, accept that, you know, the world's going to be destroyed, you might as well think about it like a sort of firework display. Yeah. And, and watch it from a nice view. Well, actually, I probably book a ticket to the space station. Yeah, that would be a good one. Genius. Yeah. But you first need to find out whether they're friendly. They might be friendly aliens, for all we know. Or, or just like this big. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that way, yeah, exactly. They haven't, they, I'd be able to take them. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Would you rather be really successful and sell millions of records or really respectful and influential? Respectful and influential, I think. Yeah. I, yeah. Don't know what would happen if, uh, I don't know what would happen to the world if we ended up selling millions of records, but. I don't think it'd be good for us. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> on Facebook wants to know whether you feel any pressure about how well the album does, especially after the big albums that have come this year from bands like Shane, Black Country, New Road, John Roy, Cleaning, and etc. Um, I don't think we worry too much about that. It's it's never a bad thing if there's lots of good albums in a, in a year, is it? is it? So we don't need to worry too much about being uh, better or people thinking we're better. I think as long as people like it and like it, I think we're happy. And we're happy as long as we don't uh, squirt ink out of our bums every time we think that. <laughs> yeah, what he said. You think he hit, he hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, right. Craig from Squid Squad would like to know what flavour of crisp each member of the band would be. Ooh. Um, starting with Arthur Ledbetter, I think Arthur Ledbetter would be a fancy Walker Sensations flavour. He's really into his fancy food. Um, 
and he loves cooking. So anything that's got lots of flavour to it, he'd like that. He's got Laurie Nankivell. He, what would he be? What? Something weird like... Um... He'd be a pom bear, I think. <laughs> yeah, he would be a pom bear. <laughs> he'd be a packet of pom bears, but, with only, but they've been crushed up in his back pocket, so that's all just powder. <laughs> um, Ollie Judge would be, I think... Space Invaders. Space Invader. Or even Transformers Snack. Yeah. Probably Space Invaders. Yeah. You are Tom Pearson. You are, in my head, those really nice um, Thank you. lentil crisps you get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. What your, am I? Your prong cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> you wait. Right. What does signing to Walt Records mean to you? Um, it means that uh, we get to put the album out without getting really, really stressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've worked out that we're not very good at anything to do with business. So um, we stick to writing the music and they look after all that stuff and they're, they're really good at it. Um, but they've also, in terms of what they mean to us, they, they've just been really, like, an, again, another nice bunch of friends that we've, that we've met. We like having chats about music, talking about gigs we've been to and albums we've listened to, amongst other things. Um, and they're all really friendly, aren't they? They're all a nice bunch. All right. What about you, Anton? Um, yeah. Uh, I think they're just really supportive of us, which I think is the main thing that we want from a record label. So it means we can just do whatever we want with our music and we know that they're going to be behind us. That's mm. one of the good things about independent record labels is that they're generally more interested in creating new things and interesting things. Yeah. yeah. Um, more so than things that are going to sell millions and millions of records, like you said before. Right. Mum wants to know when you're going to really schedule the cat the cephalopods warm up. Oh. She said you can keep it secret, but I don't think you can. I can. <laughs> I don't know about that either. Um well, keeps getting rescheduled. Cephalopods gig with Dan Fur in the lanes. Um but the last I heard of it, we were talking about it being think maybe in potentially in may but it things keep changing still and our plans keep getting changed um so i'm not sure i mean and then it also becomes difficult because the venues are all opening again and then when they're just open as as pubs that have kind of loads of people coming and it not necessarily being a music night then it gets hard for them to schedule the time to put on the gigs but it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna happen because we're friends with the, the band that we're playing with and um, they're really keen as well. Yeah. All right. You have been really quick with this. Oh. <laughs> um, and you've had really good answers. Before we go, would you like to pose for some photos which we will take from the recording? Sure. Um <laughs> <laughs> Did you just take that? Is it done? <laughs> yeah, we'll take them afterwards. Uh, um, okay, great. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> this is the first time I've posted a photo on Zoom, and I don't yeah. want to be that. It's kind of weird when you don't hear the click of the camera as well. You kind of yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much, Arlo. <laughs> and we'll hopefully see you at a, at a proper gig soon. Yeah. And, and, um, and come say hello, we'll have a chat. And yep. we'll, yeah. we'll find a copy of the album, proper one, and hand it over to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was one of the best interviews we've done. So we're really happy about that. Keep doing what you're doing. 
I think it's amazing. It's really inspiring. Yeah. Such a good project. Really into it. See you soon. Bye. 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 Here's Hannah as well. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.